Hello, Internet, and I have been held captive by the Chinese government. They've had some other guy running my Twitter account, spreading propaganda and all this other stuff. You know, I was going to have a really large bit at the beginning of this, really dunking on uh, what's been happening there and making fun of an authoritarian regime. Uh, but I decided to cut right to the chase. You guys want to know what the hell that title means. So, uh, let me cut right to the chase. I'm canceling TikTok. And yes, I mean this in the least meme way I have ever meant with that title used before in the past. Um, I, I actually have real grievances I want to air with the company. Now, I should state that this isn't the entirety of the company. It doesn't mean that it's everybody involved. You know, there are people that are working at TikTok and other places in the world that are just fine, regular, good old people. But what we're talking about is the infrastructure of the mega corporation that is behind TikTok. Uh, which is a company called ByteDance, but we'll get to all of that. Really, part of the reason I'm appalled and disgusted about what's happening is because they kind of flew under the radar why Blizzard has gotten a brunt of the much-deserved criticism. But I do want to bring some more light to another company that is engaging in just as bad activity as Blizzard. But in order to discuss that, I need to give you a very brief, super general lesson on what's happened there and a little bit about the Blizzard stuff because, I mean, come on, BlizzCon just happened? There's no way I can't talk about that. But first, before I actually explain any of the very general things about how this came to this point, uh, people ask me all the time for this stuff. In fact, very recently, I, I ended up thinking about this a lot because of a, a kind of smug tweet I got from a subscriber, I'm guessing. They follow me. Uh, but they're basically saying, well, well, why should, you know, China care? Why should they care? Why should we care at the end of the day? Now, this is somebody who enjoys the games that Blizzard puts out. Well, here's why you should care, because this actually impacts the media you consume every day. This impacts the items you are able to buy and affects them greatly on a much more fundamental level than you can ever know. There is a reason that people complain about iPhones being so expensive. In fact, you could read up about the kind of working conditions for these companies and their production manufacturing areas in China and how awful those conditions are. But the point of the matter here is, is that this goes a lot deeper than me dunking on the fact that they have a 50 lane highway that goes into a four lane highway. Uh, for example, when we look at those uh, Transformers movies, those do very well overseas, right? And part of them noticing that means now that a third act of a Transformers movie is now going to take place in a province in China or it's going to be somewhere in China. So that way the movie can help resonate with the Chinese audience more. Now, those audiences should be allowed to enjoy cinema and things like that, um, but uh, that's a Transformers movie. Really, the issue with China is a large amount of, uh, let's see, human rights issues. <laughs> Ultimately, it's going to be hard to only find companies that are ethical and completely moral. I get that. But if there's a product you use and it's doing something that's against your code of conduct or self morals you should probably know about that and i told some people about the tiktok stuff before and we've talked about it on the podcast and people are actually appalled that this is stuff that they had no idea happened now i don't want to get lost in discussing about why you should know about this just know that i think if you care about people's human rights uh you should start paying attention especially right now we're having a huge huge amount of political protest and just social unrest happening across the world. This stuff happening in Chile, in Iraq. I have a friend who lives over there, and I, I've been re I've been watching him in protest. You know, this stuff is happening across the world where we're seeing this. And I do think a lot of people have been inspired by what's happening in Hong Kong. So, how did we get to this point in Hong Kong, and what is necessarily going on? So, Hong Kong has become this kind of epicenter for a cultural movement that we've been seeing recently. Uh, you see, for a very long time, about 150 years or so, Hong Kong belonged to the British Empire. They enjoyed all the things you and I enjoy here in the West, right? So by that, I mean they enjoyed things like freedom of speech, information, freedom of expression, all the things you could enjoy under the Queen's rule. If you wanted to flee the tyranny of the Chinese government, uh, you would basically go to Hong Kong. It's where you wanted to go and to be. Uh, China and Britain ended up signing an agreement that was basically a 99-year lease on Hong Kong. And at the end of that term, Hong Kong would be returned to China. 
In fact, Hong Kong is one of the few places over there that the Chinese people can commemorate the victims of the Tiananmen Square massacre. And I use Chinese people who live in Hong Kong very loosely, and I'll get to that later. But that's a massacre the Chinese government acted out on pro-democracy protesters, which is similar to what's happening in Hong Kong now, though it hasn't turned into an absolute massacre yet. Granted, there have been people who have died. I'm getting ahead of myself. Now, as the British government passed the keys back to China, the deal was Hong Kong would enjoy a high degree of autonomy, except in foreign and defense affairs, for 50 years. China, being an authoritarian communist regime, wouldn't like this high degree of autonomy. Of course, it doesn't really fit their motto on how they run their government. So, because of that high degree of influence that Hong Kong has, China meddles in their personal affairs, right? They'll meddle in their politics and try, and actually succeed in some cases, in taking away things from Hong Kongers. Meanwhile, while that is happening in Hong Kong, while all this political intrigue is unfolding, right, in, in mainland China, uh, ethnic and religious minority groups are being placed into prison camps. In particular, the prison camps in the Zhejiang region of China. Now, according to the Department of Defense, we are talking upwards of a million to some three million people. Links below to these stories, by the way. Links below to everything so you can check what I've been talking about here. And especially read the stories about what's happening in uh, the Zhejiang Prefecture. Now, I can't go into too much detail for the sake of time, uh, but... Basically, what's been happening here is that they've been forcing a Muslim minority into prison camps. Now, I'm not going to try and pronounce the word of this ethnic minority group because yeah, it's hard to pronounce, but it's on the screen right now. Basically, what would be happening in these camps is that they would force Muslims to eat pork, torture them, and force them to read propaganda about the Chinese government and why it's great basically brainwashing them. All the while, while these human rights atrocities are happening just over in mainland China, uh, the situation in Hong Kong is really unfolding as Hong Kong is going to be brought into mainland China, or that's what China wants to happen. Hong Kongers, of course, enjoy all of these freedoms and these human rights, and they see what's happening in Zhejiang, and they say, hey, we don't want those taken away. In fact, most Hong Kongers don't even see themselves as Chinese. They see themselves as Hong Kongers, which is why I'm going to refer to them as Hong Kongers. Many of them actually want democratic reform, things that many of those people had called for before them in mainland China and given their life for. There are those that even want independence from China using American idioms calling for action for change and difference from the Chinese government. Now, this using of those idioms and these protests that are beginning to boil over, uh, really, these all come to a head when we get to the extradition bill. Now, the extradition bill is a bill that has, for now, died, but it could come back, and in the most layperson way possible, I'm going to really explain what this bill would allow. So, for the sake of example, let's say you live in a state where it's legal to smoke weed, right? Uh, but a much more powerful state says you can't do that. They say that's not allowed in our state, and you're kind of like a part of our state. So what you do is you get the police to arrest the person where it's legal and ship them out to where it's illegal in order to try and convict them of whatever you're claiming they did. And all the courts are ran by the government, so of course, you're going to jail. This effectively allows the Chinese government to find a protester or activist and basically ship them off to mainland China, where obviously you'd go missing or you'd end up in one of those re-education camps that we just covered. Or better yet, you'll just end up dead. Now, according to information, the bill is going to exclude political crimes, but come on, realistically, who believes their government now? Now, it's because of this extradition bill that allows for this kind of shipping off of people to mainland China to prosecute them. This is where the protests really begin. In short, they're an anti-extradition movement trying to stop this extradition bill from passing. They want more democratic reform to Hong Kong and to protect the Hong Kong people from China. However, once the 50 years of autonomy is up, who knows what's going to happen next? In reality, all bets are off. 
And now, this is where we come to the brave Blitz Chung, the Hearthstone player who is in support of the Hong Kong protest. Blitz Chung is a Hong Konger and Hearthstone player, right? And the guy went on live stream supporting the protest, and the uh, Blizzard had just the most wonderfully awful response to this. You see, the Chinese market is a big one. Blizzard wants their games in China because they'll do well there. So China partners up with, not China, Blizzard. I hope I didn't mix up their names before, uh, but Blizzard partnered up with Tencent, a Chinese mainland game publisher. Now, because of that partnership with Tencent, Blizzard can't support the protest even if they wanted to. The protest stands in direct opposition to the market of which they wish to break into. Now, because of this huge market in China and the potential for all this new money, and again, this is something we've seen with the film industry, and they've just completely dived headfirst into it. Uh, but we also see this with things like the NBA, right? So the NBA as a business has a huge market in China, and they want to push further into that. Which is why you have literal icons of the sport, bastions of, like, African-American rights, by the way, um, turning around and saying, oh, well, they're not that bad. Uh, I think they should stay out of politics, you know, all that stuff. Seriously, uh, you, you literally have absolute icons of the sport supporting human rights atrocities because it affects their bottom line. And, you know, I'm trying to keep this information specific, but it makes you think. Did they really care about any of those social movements happening in the U.S.? Or were they for another reason? It makes people like Colin Kaepernick look more like they're standing alone for something they believe in, while a bunch of people put their hands on his shoulder saying, we care, while collecting a bunch of money on the side, not actually caring. Now, it's not just the NBA or Blizzard. There's a whole list of companies of which uh, I'll leave linked down below uh, that have factories in mainland China or have been basically supporting the Chinese government over the Hong Kong protesters and all of that. And this is really just a super TLDR of all these events, so that way you can really get caught up to speed. And I, I, I definitely know there are people more qualified than me to talk about this. Um, but let's be real, how many of you guys read the New York Times? Alright, I thought none of you did, so uh, you'd much rather get it from me than some fuddy-duddy who doesn't actually give a shit or know who you are or know anything. I'll also leave links to r slash Hong Kong down below um, because it has endless resources and on the ground reporting from civilians and protesters uh, basically showing what's happening firsthand on the front lines of the protest. I can't show you any of these police brutality things or any of these specific events or examples uh, because I'm fighting a community guideline strike right now and I can't get another one. So I knew about TikTok and all of this beforehand. Uh, but this post is by a user on r slash Hong Kong by the name of Solitary Egg 17 uh, So let's break into why I'm canceling TikTok. Now, some backstory on how TikTok became TikTok. Uh, for those of you unaware, Musical.ly became TikTok when it was bought out by Chinese company ByteDance. You haven't heard of them before, but there's probably a very specific reason you haven't. Um, they censor content around the globe uh, based on Chinese censorship guidelines on TikTok. What makes it so interesting, right, is that the company is literally advancing Chinese foreign policy through the app. Uh, link to the article that references this down below as well. Now, uh, why do I say that they're advancing Chinese foreign policy, right? Uh, well, the CEO even said he will work more closely with the Chinese authorities to promote their values. Now, according to TikTok, the company, um, they have localized content moderation, basically meaning make a meme about Tiananmen Square, expect it to not show up in areas like China or its territories. However, as I hope that I'm getting through to you guys, um, how, how can we really trust them? Two is just keeping the information out of the hands of the people who need the information, a really better alternative. The guidelines on TikTok had also allowed them to shadow ban content that could be in violation of certain censorship guidelines. Which means you can meme about being gay and it could be visible to you, but not anybody else. So sorry, James Charles. Um, there's a good chance your TikToks are not being promoted because you're gay, but because you're James Charles, and somebody else who's not James Charles would not be having an easy time as yourself. 
Now, here's a quote from the article. The bulk of the guidelines covering China are, are contained in a section governing hate speech and religion. In every case, they are placed in a context designed to make the rules seem general purpose, rather than specific exceptions. A ban on criticism of China's socialist system, for instance, comes under the general brand ban of criticism attack towards policies, social rules of any country, such as constitutional monarchy, monarchy, parliamentary system, separation of power, socialism system, etc. Basically what they've done is they set up the guidelines in a specific way where they don't need to say it's to protect Chinese interest, but it's to protect Chinese interest given what the CEO has said and what China would do if they didn't protect Chinese interests. Now, apparently the protests were being censored on TikTok. So yeah, I went and I did hashtag Hong Kong on TikTok post and the protests are very rarely present, if at all. It's mainly like super boring influencer stuff that is actually listed here. Like I could count the Hong Kong protest related post on like one hand. While TikTok might be promoting this one kind of ideal publicly on their social channels, as we look behind the scenes at these guidelines and the business politicking that we're seeing that's not really necessarily open, um, we start to see a very different image of TikTok, one that's not progressive or promoting good values of things that are what we would mostly agree are good. The idea that somebody who's gay can talk about being gay on social media, this, that, or the other thing, or talking about how Tiananmen Square is bad. Imagine if you feel as a gay person, you want to reach youths in China. Let's just say that's something specifically you want to do. Well, too bad. You're going to be blocked in China. All of this is done with the intent to spread this idea and method of censorship. It's literally an infrastructure of censorship and an infrastructure of spreading the Chinese Communist Party's values. Okay, so you're sitting there and you're wondering, well, well Diesel, what, what can I do? This is TikTok we're talking about. This ain't some guy down the street I can go and yell at. This is a global powerhouse of social media right now until they uh, may one day disappear into anonymity. Um, but you're sitting there and you're wondering, hey, well, what, what can I do? Um, well, considering that there might actually be uh, real genuine security issues associated with TikTok, uh, you can always just delete TikTok. Or at the very least, uh, clown about China, clown about Tiananmen Square, and other things about the Chinese government and leadership until your account gets nuked. Um, because that'll definitely spread awareness real fast, especially here in the States. We don't like it when people tell us we can't say things. But in reality, memes like that and all of those things are very important for spreading awareness, especially with this kind of stuff when a government is actually trying to suppress it. Don't know what to say? Here, hashtag boycott TikTok. It's that easy. What is TikTok doing? TikTok is censoring certain topics that don't align with the Chinese Communist Party. They're taking away voices from both minority groups and Hong Kongers who want their human rights to be protected. If any of you know me and you know my values, especially on this channel, I try and make them abundantly clear for who I am as a person. There are certain lines I don't cross and things that are core and fundamental to who I am as a person. I love freedom and I mean that in the most unironic way possible. No like fucking info warrior boomer bullshit. Uh, but I, I really think things like freedom of speech and information and pursuit of happiness are things that are fundamentally good. People are constantly worried over the idea of this World War III being some nuclear war or some absolute destruction of our world, but in reality, personally, as someone who considers himself a bit of a futurist, uh, the next war is going to be one of information. I often make the comparison that we live in a cyberpunk dystopia, and that's not something I want to see come to pass. Uh, but hell, for example, years, for years, the U.S. government has, in my opinion, been illegally spying on their own citizens. Why? Because they could. And, and this isn't me, like, I I'm not trying to defend or promote American values. I'm promoting my values first. Because I'm going to be real with you, I sometimes doubt that my own government supports what I believe. Point of the matter here is, is that my location on my Twitter profile listed as Airstrip 1. For those of you that have read 1984, that's where the book takes place. The most powerful tool you have in the current day and age is your voice and your reach. 
and your voice gets louder when you work collectively with others. That's why protesting is a thing. Your voice is the most powerful tool you have. It's the most powerful tool you have to oppose those in power. Don't let anyone take your voice from you. You should be fighting tooth and nail when someone comes knocking to shut down what someone is saying. Because while they might be stifling the voice of someone that you absolutely hate today, tomorrow that goalpost could change. And it could very well be your ideals that are on the chopping block. So what can you do? You can make your voice heard for Hong Kong by tweeting about the protest on Twitter. You can do so by signing petitions I have linked down below, going to a protest or making one if there isn't one near you. I'll leave links to any and all information you could possibly need down below. My name's FPS Diesel, and if something happens to my channel, we all know that we gotta blame Winnie the Pooh.